Okay, hi, welcome. I'm going to try something a little new with this unit. It's called a flipped classroom. This is the homework that you'd have to do, uh, getting the lecture, so to speak, and the notes at home, and then coming to class and we'll be doing more hands-on learning and uh, less of me talking. So here we go, let's try this. So we're going to start, first of all, that should not say unit three, that should be unit two. Okay, uh, this is the second unit that we're going to be doing in our Science 8 mechanical systems. And I wanted to introduce this unit with this image. It's called the Da Vinci Surgical System. And the gist behind this system is as follows. Uh, here's a setup that you would normally see. Um, it's designed so that a surgeon in Hong Kong could operate on somebody in uh, San Francisco, let's say. Uh, this person here wouldn't necessarily be in the room. This Part of the device might be elsewhere, it could be in Hong Kong or in San Francisco, whereas the rest of it here, this would be in another location. Okay, so you have the operated part on here, this is where the, the operator is, and then the machine would do the operation on the individual. Okay, so the way that the machine works is as follows you have somebody uh, sitting in the machine, hands inside the machine, looking inside, and the surgeon will use hand movements connected to uh, kind of like claws, as seen in this diagram here. Uh, these claws, which will then be mimicked or copied by these claws. Okay. Now the the benefit of this would be that the surgeon would make very minute or small movements, and the claw would be even smaller. It'd be more precise. Okay. Uh, they call it an endo wrist. Okay. It's endo wrist technology, which will move the same movements as a surgeon, but much smaller details. In the other room, we still have. Um, anesthesiologists and assistants, so we actually have people in the other room still making sure that uh, things don't go wrong. Uh, what's cool about this machine too is that you see right here we have some arms. This machine can have up to five arms. Five arms all controlled by the, 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 the uh, surgeon. Um, one of those arms could be a camera and the other four could be uh, up to four different tools. So very cool. So this is what the surgeon would see while sitting down. Um, these visual eyes show what the, the surgeon sees when they're using this uh, Da Vinci system. Um, kind of talked about the movements already there. But here's a question. Uh, why do you think a doctor would want to use this machine to operate and not his own hands? Okay. And I mentioned that a little bit before. Um, why do you think the patient might want the same? Why do you think a patient would want the machine to do uh, the, the surgery, maybe not the doctor? Okay, it all has to do with uh, uh, very specific, very tight movements that the doctor may or may not be able to uh, to perform with big fingers. Um, so this machine would hopefully be a little bit better. Um, I kind of thought that they looked like stormtroopers. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe nobody else sees that. I don't know. I thought it was kind of strange that this <laughs> looks a lot like this. Anyways, continuing. Um, here's a quote by an anonymous physician when they asked about the Da Vinci surgical system. They said, quote, we are alerted to this surgical technology in the advertising of a theater program. Mm. Amongst the advertising of plastic surgeons for the rich, diamonds, and high-end furniture. It appears that even surgeons are striving to be machines. But if we don't quit this mad dependence on technology soon, it won't be possible for us to live without it. And we mean that quite literally. In the long run, it is the technology that is killing us. What do you think? Is this, uh, is this accurate? Do you think that surgeons would have a dependency on that technology? They couldn't do it without it? Just something to, something to think about. Uh, as we wrap up here, though, in this introduction, why call it Da Vinci Surgical System? Okay, Think about that for a minute. You've done or are doing the Renaissance in social studies. What do you know about Da Vinci? What do you know about uh, his history? Or what he used to do? Or how he used to do things? Okay, what did, he, what did he sketch? What is he famous for? Why would they call this the Da Vinci surgical system or surgical suite? Something to think about, okay? Uh, just in closing here, here's what we're gonna be doing in unit two, okay, not in unit three. We're gonna be uh, looking at three guiding questions here. One. How have simple machines been meeting human needs through history? How have, how have we been using machines over the last 2,000 years, let's say, and longer? Number two, how do simple and complex mechanical systems make work easier for us? Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, the less work that I can do, the better. So how does it make work easier for us? How can we change a system? How can we change a mechanical device? Okay, 
to make it much more easier for us to use that machine. So let's uh, keep in mind we're going to look at some changes in mechanical systems too. And then lastly, what criteria can we use to evaluate a simple complex machine? Okay, whoops, we want to evaluate a simpler complex machine. Uh, what makes it good? What makes it bad? How can we make it better? Uh, do we need it? Can we live with something else? Okay, uh, so just a quick little introduction to Unit 2 and uh, we'll continue on with the next one.